Okay, so now we're going to look at primary storage, right? And basically, primary storage, also known as main memory and immediate access storage, is a set of chips found inside a, a system unit. So basically what primary storage is, primary storage is going to allow you to have a temporary um, way to save or hold your information for a short period of time. Okay. Now there are two types of primary storage. We have RAM, R-A-M, and we have ROM, R-O-M. Now each of them are basically work differently. Now RAM, R-A-M, which stands for random access memory, is where you have an actual device that is placed inside of your system that is going to hold or keep your information temporarily for you. All right. So with RAM, R-A-M, it's going to keep it and hold it for you. Now the thing about RAM is that it's going to hold it only for a, a short period of time or as long as your system has electricity running through it. So for example, let's say using your computer and it's plugged into the wall, your, your um, desktop computer and it's plugged into the wall, even your laptop plugged in. If you don't save the information directly to secondary storage, um, and you haven't given it a name and so forth and the light goes away that information is then going to be lost right now with RAM Yes, it holds information or data temporarily Right, but it's also known as volatile memory, which basically means that um, It's not gonna hold it for a very long time basically hold it temporarily now let's look at ROM, R-O-M, which stands for read-only memory, sorry, read-only memory. Now actually this is a chip inside of the um, system unit and it's basically a part of the computer itself, the chip, computer chip, and it holds instructions that are going to start up your system when you turn it on. It is fixed or hardwired inside of the system. And this cannot be changed or altered in any way, which makes it a non-volatile type of memory, right? Hence the name read-only. Now with read-only memory, what happens there is that when the processor is manufactured, they put instructions on that chip how to start up your device, whether it's your cell phone, your tablet, or your laptop, or an ordinary PC, right? They put instructions on it how to do that. Now, if you damage or alter these instructions, your system will not start up properly, right? So that's one of the, 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 f the features of RAM. So ROM, sorry, ROM. So ROM here is basically permanent storage. Cannot be changed, cannot be altered. Whereas RAM, R-A-M, is, R-A-M, sorry, is temporary storage. Now, because of the permanence of ROM, R-O-M, um, they came up with some variations to allow individuals to actually create their own ROM. Now, like we said, ROM cannot be changed or altered and it's put on there permanently. But let's say, for example, you work in the manufacturing industry and you want to create your own startup processes or instructions for your own devices. In that instance, you would then have used one of these variations of ROM, right? Now, there are basically three variations to ROM, which are PROM, EEPROM, e -E -prom, and EEPROM. Now, PROM stands for Programmable Read-Only Memory. EEPROM stands for Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. And EEPROM stands for Electrical Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. Now, these three work differently. For example, PROM, P-R-O-M. This one allows you to actually write your information once, but once you've written it, you cannot make any changes or alterations. It's there permanently. EPROM allows you to erase and write as many times as you want, and this uses an ultraviolet uh, method in terms of erasing and writing the information. And then you have EEPROM, which is Electrical Erasable Program Read-Only read Memory, this one also allows you to erase and write as many times.